If you're like me, you really enjoy a do-it-yourself project and challenging your mind and your building skills. One of the questions that pops up pretty often on the Leon the Lobster series here on my YouTube channel is, doesn't an American lobster need cool water? Obviously the answer is yes, just like some other aquatic species such as Nautilus. Cool water though is generally under 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. So depending on what room your aquarium is in and what temperature zone you live in, you may need to either chill your aquarium water or heat it if you're keeping tropical fish or other tropical aquatic life. Leon the Lobster's water stays at a range of 65 to 69 degrees Fahrenheit with no chiller because he's on a downstairs room with a cement floor and I tend to keep the house cool. With the questions viewers were posting about Leon and cool water requirements, I did start thinking about a DIY chiller though. A lot of aquarium keepers are on a budget or are do-it-yourselfers or both. This is what I came up with. I started with a stainless steel coil from the beer brewing industry as a heat exchanger, something the aquarium water can flow through to make it cool. Stainless steel generally comes in two grades, 304 stainless, which is good general use stainless, and 316 stainless, which is more corrosion resistant and better for saltwater applications or acidic applications. Obviously, plastic won't work for this application because plastic is an insulator and doesn't transfer heat or cool very well. And other metal piping like copper are very, very toxic and dangerous to some aquatic life. This stainless steel coil would become my heat exchanger. The price was $168. I'm going to try and build a chiller for a total of about $400. Most aquarium chillers will cost around $1,200 US. Next, I needed to find some device to chill the stainless steel coil. The first thing that came to mind was a mini fridge. So I looked around the big box stores. The stainless coil takes up just about a cubic foot of space. I ended up choosing this 3.3 cubic foot mini fridge. The stainless coil will fit in there nicely and I should have room left in there for keeping other stuff cool, like fish food, beer, bottles of water, or whatever. I also grabbed some half inch clear vinyl hose to get the water from the aquarium to the chiller. Unfortunately, when I got home and opened the box, the mini fridge was dented and crushed in two places. So I made another trip to exchange it. Here's what the fridge looks like inside. The first thing I did was take out everything I don't need. Here's the freezer at the top. And the temperature control. On this mini fridge, this is where all the cooling work happens, in these little coils in the freezer. The stainless coil fits nicely in both directions, so I have options on how I can plumb it. At least I think so. 
I need to drill two holes through the side of the fridge, and obviously I don't want to drill through any Freon tubes or any wires. This side to the left is less likely to have either of those, but I look it over carefully to get an understanding of where everything is. I'm going to try and loosen the side panels and look in to see if there's anything in there I need to avoid. The sides are glued and sandwiched together with insulation, so I'm betting the pipes from the compressor run up the back straight to the freezer at the top. This 5 8 drill bit should be perfect for a snug fit of the tubing through the side of the fridge. The vinyl tubing fits nicely on the stainless heat exchanger, and I'll use a small clamp for safety. I'll drill two holes through the side, so hopefully there's nothing but insulation on this side. I hope there is. Nothing. I'll mark both spots and drill a pilot hole first. Here we go, fingers crossed. I know some of you have already noticed this is an old drill that sits in the shed a lot more than it's used when some insect fills the bolt holes with a mud nest. Okay, this looks good. Metal, insulation, and plastic. No sparks, no Freon spraying out. Now I come in with the 5 8 cents bit and finish the holes out. Yeah, that's a clean hole straight through the insulation. No problems.
This all looks good. I'm using a small DC pump to push the water through the stainless coil. It's a variable speed, so I can adjust the dwell time in the coil by changing the flow rate. Next, I fill a bucket with reverse osmosis water and let the system run overnight to clean out the piping and also to check for any leaks. The water temperature is already going down, so that's a good sign. There are no leaks, that's a very good sign. The inside of the fridge is now 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So with the variable speed DC pump, I'll be able to change the dwell time or how fast the aquarium water moves through the stainless steel chiller. Obviously, the longer the water stays in the chiller coil, the more it will be cooled. There is a balance though, so I'll have to play with the flow rate and the fridge thermostat to get the ideal combo. Also, obviously, it's best to keep the vinyl tubing to and from the chiller as short as possible, so the water doesn't heat back up on its way back to the aquarium. With the extra storage space, I can keep concentrated microfeeds or frozen fish food, but also keeping bottles of frozen water in the freezer area and cold bottles around the coil will help the fridge do its job of cooling more efficiently because it's harder for the warm aquarium water to heat a mass of very cold liquid. So the fridge compressor won't have to work as hard to keep the fridge at a constant temperature. I've tested this homemade chiller on a 55 gallon aquarium and it will drop the 55 gallon aquarium by 10 degrees Fahrenheit over a few days. So a 10 gallon, a 20 gallon, or a 40 gallon aquarium are no problem to chill, likely down to 50 even. On a larger 125 gallon aquarium, it's capable of maintaining the water at 68F, but struggles to drop the water temperature below that if the ambient room temperature is 70 or 72 or above. The total cost was about 390 US dollars, 165 or so for the stainless chiller, 180 for the mini fridge, and $18 for the vinyl tubing, and 18 for the drill bits and clamps. I already had the DC pump. Most official aquarium chillers in the one-third horsepower range are about $1,200. Also, how do you put a price on the fun challenge of building something useful? I enjoyed this, and I like the results. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'll be posting some new projects soon and definitely some new Leon updates.